Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to show you some variations on the crozet clasp. This is the basic crozet clasp. It's composed of two components. It's got a crib wire that goes around the tooth, and it's got a crescent wire that tucks into the embrasures of that tooth. And that's where it gets its retentive value. Now the wire I use is an 028, it's called Crozet wire. It's a cobalt alloy wire and it works really, really well for this appliance or this clasp. And it has a high tensile strength, which this clasp gets a lot of abuse, so it needs to be a strong wire, but not, it doesn't need to be so soft that it doesn't have some elasticity to it. If this clasp were dead soft, these crescents would bend immediately and not have any retentive value. So it needs to have some bit of elasticity to it, but it's nice to have that cobalt alloy wire. Now this can be used in acrylic, like it can come over at the ends, or it can be used as a soldered appliance, like uh, this one over here, where you go around and circumnavigate the uh, the appliance and then be soldered to some kind of mechanism on the lingual. Now this is the crozet appliance, this is the crib wire for the crozet appliance and that's where it gets its name, but we're not going to talk about the crozet appliance. It's be a lot of discussion that we, we're not going to cover in this video. But the clasp itself can be used in any number of ways. Now one thing I do on this clasp is when I bend this crescent wire, I will taper the end of it and I just take a rubber wheel and just kind of go over the end of it and smooth it so that it's not just cut off and jagged on the end there. Now, if you're going to be going into acrylic, you can simply bend the wire straight across and then go into the acrylic like that and then bend your crib wire and place it in there. Like that. Now I would uh, I roughen those up before I stick them in there so that they're ready to solder and then I'll take a little tiny bit of wax and stick it on one end just to hold it in a place and then kind of position it and then I'll put some uh, stone, just a little stone in here on either side to kind of hold it in a place and then I'll cover that up with a heat protective compound and bring it right up to here. If you just leave the stone there, it could heat up and boil the water inside the stone if there's any left in it and it would cause it to pop and uh, you, have, you, know, you could have problems with that. So if you cover it up with a heat protective compound, it alleviates, alleviates that problem. Okay, now if you're going to go into, if you're going to uh, solder it onto an appliance on the lingual, then you would have to have it on on the buckle, you could have it one of two ways. You could have it where it's split down the middle and have your crescent there. Now if you do that though, it doesn't leave much room to solder this crib wire. The crescent's nice and soldered, but the crib wire is pretty limited on its ability to be soldered. Now if you're using a laser solder, uh, a, a laser welder, or a puck, or something like that, that's not going to be that much of a problem. But if you're just silver soldering, that's a problem. So if you're going to just silver solder, or if you're going to use the laser welder or the puck, either way, this really is a, a better option where you overlap it. Now that's going to be the basis for a pretty good solder joint. Now another thing I like to do is I like to bend the wires so that it's going to be just a little bit away from the model. And with it being just a little bit away from the model, that gives the solder the ability to wrap around the wire and it's not fighting trying to get between the wire and the plaster. Okay, here's another little technique, a little trick you can do. I cut a piece of band material and this was just a molar band material. I just cut it off and kind of sized it and I can stick that on the model. Now you want to roughen it up before you do this and you can take just a little drop of super glue, put it on the model and then put the band up against it, the band material up against it and it will stick on there real nicely. Then you can bend the wires on top of it and that will give you a good surface to solder against. So that'll make a really nice strong solder joint. 
It'll also make it really nice on the inside of the of it, so it's nice and pretty and shiny. In fact, that first one I showed you, that's that's exactly what it did. And you can tell from this, it's nice and pretty and shiny. And it makes for a good solder area. So that's a pretty good clasp right there. Now, here's one where I it's a retainer. It's another way you can use the Crozac clasp. This one, I did not use the band material, but I left the wires away, and you can see it's still a pretty good solder joint. It's not as good as the one with the band, but it's still not bad. And this, I used the clasp on this labial bow, so it gives it some retentive value in the mesial distal in those embrasures. Now, another way this class can be used, uh, there's an appliance called the ALF appliance, A-L-L for Advanced Light Force, and it uses uh, Crozet modified Crozet, Crozet clasps on the cuspids. And what I do on that is I taper the ends of the wires, go ahead and roughen it up where it's going to be soldered. It'll be soldered right in this area here. Put a little dollop of wax there, and then you can lift this up. And that'll make for a nice solder area. Then you can put your lingual wire underneath it. And then you can put the heat protected compound all the way up to the solder area. And that'll leave a lot of free end here to engage into the embrasures of the lingual of the cuspid. All right, that's it for Crozac clasps. I'll see you next week.